Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. I thought I would go ahead and start this now because I realized that I'm going to be on a trip sometime next week, so I don't know how much chance I might have doing some videos while I'm on the trip, but at least here it'll be good to start some of your newer suggestions and then probably finish them throughout the following week when I come back. But yes, this is one of your brand new suggestions and it has to do with yet another memorable abduction case this one having a little bit of controversy because to this day it's still debated as to whether it truly happened. So there's evidence that, that points to it happening and then there's evidence pointing to it being like a fake, something along those lines. So I'll go ahead and I'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But it has to do with this. It's the abduction of a gentleman named Antonio Villas Boas. And I'm going to go ahead and provide all the rich info tied to this supposed or alleged abduction. So what was this abduction of Antonio Villas Boas? Well, he was someone that lived in Brazil, specifically Sao Francisco de Sales, Brazil, try saying that five times, and it happened back in 1957, so quite a ways back, and it was something that I was actually predating the Betty and Barney Hill abduction, so maybe that's why it gained some prominence, and, and it does tie into the reason why people believe that it was true, but first, let's talk about the, the gentleman himself, Antonio. Antonio was just someone at the time who was 23 years old, there he was again in Sao Francisco de Sales working in this case at night. He was a farmer there and he was someone that I guess uh, was able to work on his family's farmland. Specifically though he was working at night and apparently this was done to make sure that he could avoid all those hot temperatures during the daytime. So there he was just plowing along at night and on this date uh, specifically October 16th 1957 that's when this happened. So he was stating that he was plowing through the night through the fields when he saw what he described as a red night somewhere in the far distance somewhere in the night sky and normally he wouldn't pay too much attention from it but for the fact that there this star this quote unquote star started to approach him directly in fact it was too much of a coincidence because it started to get really really close to him so much so that finally he realized that this thing was was definitely coming straight towards him he started to grow uh, more and more in size, and then that's when he was able to see it in person, like really, really close. And uh, it's a very strange design. In fact, you're looking at it now. The way it was described, it's a circular or egg-shaped craft, and it seemed to have these red lights towards the front. Normally, when you think of a UFO, you think of like the classic saucer shape. But no, in this case, this thing was actually egg-shaped. So that was interesting to note when I was um, when I was reviewing the information for it. And then it had what he described was these three legs that came across from it. Like I guess like it used it as a landing uh, landing of. Uh, uh, legs essentially some kind of landing pod of some sort and then these things they just seem to pop out from underneath they it landed on the ground and then that's when um, that's when he knew that he they know something else was gonna happen so not necessarily wanting to wait for it to happen this guy Boas decided that, that that he was just gonna run from there but when he did so that's when this thing occurred um, he attempted to leave on his tractor no less I don't know how much you know how fast a tractor goes but presumably I mean at least based on what I've seen on TV and movies they don't go that fast and so it was not a surprise whenever this thing his tractor uh, started to have some malfunction by coincidence it seemed like this uh, this starcraft or whatever it was actually killed his engine and so he decided to just run off essentially on foot and he was about to escape but that's when he noticed this there were these humanoids some people that were wearing these gray coveralls and helmets you're looking at some of the descriptions of them now this one also stands out in terms of some of the past abductions or the past encounters I've talked about because they look nothing like some of the past ones that that, that that you've seen before I mean you can clearly see they have like these skin tight clothing 
they have these apparatuses tied towards their back almost like breathing tubes that go up towards the front they look very humanoid in a sense that they're taller they have like the usual uh, width in this case of the chest of the arms of the legs not let's like, say like the average gray which you see that it's usually smaller in stature and has very skinny arms very skinny body but an abnormally large head no in this case all the proportions seem to be intact it's their faces though had what looks to be like a mask a very distinct mask again with those tubes from the back stretching upwards into the mask and then you can see the eyes protruding <clears throat> from the mask and then appearing outward but again the eyes themselves don't seem to have any of the classic gray eyes like where you have those large bulbous black eyes almost like praying mantis eyes no in this case these things were were almost normal looking but for the fact that they looked like they looked like they they obviously had such a bizarre attire on in fact Boas was able to describe that the eyes were considered small and blue the coveralls were completely gray and then whatever it was on their face was considered a mask or a helmet something along those lines they were even make they're making some kind of speech and the way he described it was noises almost like they were barking or even yelping to each other that would have been quite interesting to hear if there ever was a recording along those lines because again to, um, harking back to some of the past encounters of greys you'll you'll see that they never really talk in fact they've been known to just communicate mentally but in this case no whatever these creatures were they were absolutely talking to each other by these barks or yelp so they abducted him uh, it seems like there were either two or three of them right there they abducted him they pretty much uh, shanghaied him and then took him straight up into the aircraft there he was essentially stripped of all of his clothes and then he was covered with what he described as a strange gel this was something i guess that was put on him i don't know either to make him subdued or something to protect him whatever it was it was absolutely some kind of strange gel that was placed on him then he was taken into what he described into a semicircular room with a lot of red symbols written all over it by the way much of what he's stating he he has stated without having to go under hypnosis he seems to have some pretty broad mind like almost an eidetic mind he can recall the tiniest details and in fact these symbols you're looking at now he was able to reproduce them directly for people that were um, investigating his abduction and again all of this was done without the aid of a camera without the aid of something else to record it it was just pretty much him using his mind and he was again not using hypnosis so they took him into this room he saw those symbols on it then they proceeded to draw some blood but in this case straight from his chin um, and, and when that happened then they took him again into another room where he waited there for a little while that's when this gas, the way he described it was, this gas started pumping into that new room that he was in. He was not reacting to it very well. In fact, he stated that he became violently ill. Who knows if he was like throwing up or if he was uh, having the shakes, whatever is the case. But he was definitely having an ill effect from it. Then, after this, this is probably the most memorable thing regarding his entire encounter. Good or bad, this is essentially what happened to him afterward. He was brought into yet another room, and when that happened, he was met by, in this case, a female. Or what was the closest approximation to a female. She was just like your average woman here on earth she was considered very attractive um, uh, very sumptuous like essentially all the classic traits that you would uh, subscribe to let's say having someone that is a very attractive young female and she was stark naked she was standing in front of him just pretty much without any clothes at all the only thing though that stood out from her that that was different was the fact that her chin was a little bit more pointed than let's say your average uh, female chin and of course you know women's chins are actually more rounded already than men's chins are but in this case this one was even more pointed and she seemed to have these blue cat-like eyes the way he described it was um, um, you know there was something involving like a cat um, as far as her head she had these platinum blonde hair that definitely stood out almost white um, but otherwise uh, that, that was something else that that stood out for him 
but he was immediately attracted to her. He can't note, though, the fact if it was something along the lines of, of let's say, uh, the environment, the gel, let's say maybe the gas, whatever it was that was causing him to be subdued or causing him to, um, to, to, to follow, in this case, the attraction for this female. But either way, she decided that she wanted to come over to him, and then they started to actually have sex. And so they did so, and the way he described it was um, it was something where she didn't even kiss him, but instead it was just nipping him on the chin throughout the intercourse. And once that was over, this female, again, didn't communicate with him per se. Instead, she just smiled at him, rubbed her belly, and then pointed upwards. And this guy, Boas, was able to then determine that w with what they just did, she was then going to raise their child, their future child, but in this case, up in space. And so he realized, of course, that he was just used as a pawn. He was someone that was not very happy about that. In fact, he felt angered about the situation. And the way he stated it was because to him, they basically much just used him as a stallion uh, rather than, let's say, as a human being, like treating him as a human, but instead treating him as an animal. And then that was it. They put him back into his clothing. They were giving him a quick tour. Again, this is all based on his testimony they gave him a quick tour of the ship and then he tried to actually take something from inside the ship to show proof something that would uh, that, that that they could uh, that he could actually showcase to others that this is something that came from the ship itself considering you know how much people would have a hard time believing his story the way he described it was it was a clock like device just something that looks so bizarre but sometimes at the same time looked like a clock but he was caught by these aliens and he was not allowed to do so and so the ship was then opened up he was escorted off and then he saw it took off and when he gauged essentially what the time was afterward he saw that it was about four hours so again something different from some of the other past abduction cases where a lot of times people have been gone for days on end and again having no recollection here though in this case he was only gone for about four hours and he had complete recollection again almost an eidetic memory towards every single detail that occurred to him he actually went on to live a regular life afterward um to the very day he died he still stated that this was a true story all the way until he died sometime in 1991 so even though later on in life he was married he had children he became a lawyer the one thing he struck through throughout his entire life was the fact that yes this story was true now let's go back to what I was discussing earlier about all the controversy for this 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 the uh, this story this abduction is the fact that a lot of this detail everything that he stated it seemed like a lot of it people People took on face value because at the time when he was giving interviews in fact the way he uh, was able to give the very first interview for this was because there was an ad placed in one of the Brazilian newspapers asking people for encounters or their experiences with UFOs and so he answered that ad and then he was able to state exactly what happened and at that time whenever he described that he was just a simple farmer people seemed to just take that at face value thinking to themselves if he was someone in this case from a remote third world country and he was living a farm life he would not be the kind of person that would try to make something up like his claims would be more credible if that makes sense but as it turns out there was a similar story that was printed within some periodical there back in November 1957 uh, remember uh, 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 when it comes to this story this thing whatever occurred uh, it seemed like this guy Bowes may have borrowed the details from this this encounter um, it, because a lot of it is pretty similar it was a story involving a guy named George Adamski and so people might have thought that no um, in this case his encounter was truly true uh, Bowes's encounter was true because he was a simple farmer maybe even illiterate because he was again from a third world country but what they didn't take into consideration was the fact that his family was uh, pretty well off uh, considering they had a farm they even had a tractor and having a tractor during those times in that location meant that you were someone that had a prominence and he was in fact at that time studying correspondence course to become that future lawyer that I mentioned a little earlier so he was someone that was actually uh, pretty educated he was able to read I mean he was reading all the time and when that happened uh, people were able to then surmise afterward you know maybe just maybe he might have seen this story 
in this case by this other guy by this George Adamski but that seems to be just the only evidence really that points to him trying to make it up or trying to make the story up uh, because even then after he became a lawyer then people would state afterward well he's now a lawyer he's someone that's of a social status so again why would he have made that story up because he's someone that would have much more to lose so it's almost like a win-win situation for him also another thing that 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 was good for him again was the fact that this happened several years still before the Barney and Betty Hill abduction which truly took off the store you know essentially it was the hallmark of all alien abductions so in this case um, um, the fact that he was reporting something like this well before it became uh, not popular but it became much more mainstream when it came to abductions that also adds credibility to this guy to, um, to this Antonio Boas's description but that's it that's pretty much all the info associated with his abduction again a lot of controversy still tied to him did he make it up did he not uh, as far as him not making it up it's the fact that it ha is still before the Barney and Betty Hill abduction and then also is such bizarre like the, the information that he presented uh, definitely stood out and then him making it up the people that state that yes he did so because he read it off of another story and they were taking it to, not taking into consideration that even though they thought he was just a poor peasant in this case though he was actually someone that was from a wealthier family and was educated so who knows it's up to you to decide if anybody has anything else I might have missed any other important items that stand out please post those comments below that would be really good to hear so alright everybody thanks again as always take care